Hey guys, Bobby here with eTech. Today I'm going to briefly cover how to calibrate the Ford Blue Light laser machine. Um, it's a pretty quick and simple process. I'm just going to answer the commonly asked questions that we usually get and hopefully make this uh, easier for everyone. So starting off, the first thing to understand is it's an X and Y axis that you're dealing with when it comes to calibrating the machine. Um, the values I wrote down there, you can do this if you want. If not, um, if you just remember this, that'll help too. Um, it all depends on how you laser the first time. So if it looks like the pattern is shifted to the left, that means it's too far negative. So you would have to add uh, 0.1 to your X value. Um, same thing goes if it's shifted up or down on the, the Y axis, then you would add or subtract 0.1. I'm gonna go over that real quick. Um, I haven't lasered this piece of glass yet. I'm gonna go through the steps to do that and then I'll go ahead and run the calibration process on here. So. As far as the machine settings go, I was already in there, but I'll go back to the beginning. You have to hit unlock first to interact with the machine. You're gonna hit settings, center. Then the password, the system to get into it is uh, 101515. You're gonna hit the check mark. And then here are our X and Y values. So once I run the glass in there, if it looks like, say, the pattern is shifted to the left, that means I'm too far on the negative side. So to adjust, I would add, you basically add and subtract 0.1, which is 0.1 of a centimeter, uh, or one millimeter at a time, um, just to adjust slowly so you don't move too much to the left or right. So for example, if I needed to shift to the right on the x-axis here, I would change that value. It's gonna go from 104.9 to 105, technically, because the 0.9, if you add the one, it carries over to the, to the uh, uh, whole value, so it'd be 105. So I'm not gonna do anything with this right now. Um, I guess I can show you how you would change it, but I would say I'm changing my Y value. I'm gonna tap on that. Uh, oh, let me remember what it was first, because you do need to remember that. 47.9, right? So if I wanna change that, I'm gonna tap on that. I'm gonna change it to say, it was 47.9, let's just go 48. Hit the check mark, there it is. Final thing, you have to hit confirm for it to actually save it. Now it's saved, you would go back and change it. I'm actually gonna change it back though. You do have to enter the password again, uh, just so it's what it was originally. That was 47.9. Check mark, firm, done. All right, so now we're gonna actually run the laser. Make sure you always put the bracket in there first. You can't just put this piece of glass in. If you do, it's gonna cause some issues. You put your glass in. Make sure that um, it is in this orientation with the word forward on the left-hand side. If not, it's gonna uh, not calibrate the right way. Um, the other thing, the common one that uh, we have questions on is, why isn't my laser burning? So the focal point is really important to get um, down. You need to make sure that this ball can barely fit under there. If it can, then that means your laser is the right spot. If the laser is too high or too low, you're gonna end up either not burning anything or only burning in certain spots. So it looks like it's good there. I'm gonna go ahead and close it. I'm gonna hit, uh, oh, I'm gonna go over here, carving. Go to the file, which is 4.in, hit figures. And it's gonna run through the process. And this takes roughly, I don't remember timing it, but it's under five minutes for sure. It's basically gonna go through the entire edge, uh, and make sure, making sure that the edges are aligned and then that center sort of diamond shape is the final alignment piece. Um, a couple things I'm gonna cover while it's doing this. If say your laser doesn't ever turn on, one, make sure that the laser is connected. There's a cable plugged in up there on top of the laser you can see. If that's not plugged in, laser's not getting power or data. So you need to make sure you check that. Other thing is there are um, some pieces that hold the platform and the laser in place. Uh, you have one on the left. One of the screws is still in there. We just left it in, but as long as you take the bracket out, you're fine. If you don't remove that one or the one on the other side, your platform isn't gonna move, which is a problem. Then the final one is up there on that rail where the laser's moving left to right, there's another screw that holds the laser in place from moving side to side. You need to make sure you take that out too. Um, aside from that, that's 
pretty much all as far as getting it going. Um, if you have to stop this process for any reason, um, you would just hit the adjust and then uh, stop. I'm gonna let it go, it's at 73% right now, so it should be done shortly. And then we're gonna take a look at what it actually burned to make sure everything is good there. Um, it's at 86%, so yeah, maybe it's roughly two minutes that it's gonna take at least for checking the first pass. Um, from there, it's gonna take longer if you have to adjust multiple times. And that's why you get these uh, calibration blanks multiple in your uh, order, just so you can make sure you have different ones to test out if for some reason the first couple uh, don't look quite ready. 98% there, should just be finishing up now. Okay, it's doing the diamond now. There we go. So once it says 100%, we get to hit back, hit unlock just so the screen's open. So take this out, and it did nothing. So this is actually a good example of what happens when the focal point is off. So it was off for me, even though I've done it before, so I'm gonna try it one more time. I'm gonna adjust the focal point slightly. So it's that in there. And what I'm seeing, it looks like the laser may be a little too high. So I'm going to put it right there in the center, the little uh, rod, loosen the screw up here on the top left, so I'm going to show that screws up here, oh sorry, right here, loosen that, that's going to let your laser go up and down, it's right on there, then tighten the screw, remove the rod again, we're going to try this one more time again, carving, Go all the way to forward dot in, hit figures, that's gonna start. Sometimes it's hard to see what it's doing. We also don't recommend staring the laser for too long. Um, it is a very bright light, so can uh, mess with your vision a little bit. It's not gonna cause any immediate danger or anything like that, but definitely don't ever look at it with this door open. This kind of has like a welding uh, visor type material uh, to protect your eyes from the light. What I'm actually gonna do is stop it real quick just to make sure again it's burning. If you think too that for some reason it's not doing anything, you can do what I'm doing right now, which is hit adjust, stop, confirm, there is a sort of lag from when you do that to when it actually stops. Hit unlock again, just to have it. Open it back up. Laser stop moving, so we get to pull it out. There we go. So it looks like it's actually lasering now. So that's all it was, was a focal point. And from the looks of it, it looks like it got the first pass, which is pretty good. It didn't get to the diamond part yet, but you see how I'm in a little bit over here. But it does a second pass, and they usually um, cover. The, uh, the outside that's left, so I'll just check to make sure it was going. Let's do that one more time. And again, I haven't adjusted anything right now. Um, another question that we often get is, what are the values that we recommend to have the machine at? That's a hard question to answer because there really isn't uh, a set number of values. Um, each machine can come differently depending on how it came from the factory. We do test and calibrate them when they get in to us from the factory. Um, but in transit and you moving the laser around even, calibration can get off very easily. So we always recommend if you are if you put the machine somewhere, try to have it somewhere that's not gonna have to be moved um, anytime soon. And if it is moved, always run the calibration process again or do this basically verifying the calibration process before you put a customer's phone in there because um, with any laser, if the laser hits somewhere it's not supposed to, such as the logic board or flex cables, um, even the battery, it can cause issues with the device and no one wants that. Um, we don't want you guys to have that either. So it's just really important to make sure that your calibration is good um, before you ever get going on a customer phone. Um, right now we're at 61%, so should, shouldn't be too much longer Then we'll take a look at what we're looking at. Um, trying to think of anything else calibration wise. Um, I think that's about it. Um, again, as I mentioned in the very beginning, it's all about the X and Y axis coordinates. 
Um, you just mess with those. You add a value or subtract a value to the X or Y uh, if you need to move left or right for the X or uh, up and down for the Y. Um, you just adjust those. Uh, one more question that I just remembered uh, commonly comes up is from the documentation that comes with the lasers, it's all from the manufacturer. Um, we've tried to tweak some of it, but uh, some of it is a little hard to understand at times. Um, there is no such thing as a negative value when it comes to the values you put in here. You noticed earlier it has a dash um, and then the number. Those are all positive values. Um, so you're, you'll never be able to go say your x value has a, a negative number. So I, I don't remember my x, but uh, my y was 47. I can't put in negative 47. I can subtract from the 47, but I can't ever go negative. Um, and that's important to understand because uh, we've gotten that uh, call fairly often and it's a pretty easy one to answer, um, but uh, it's again from the documentation. That's why we're making the video to kind of help you guys out. So let's take the uh, glass out. From what I see here, it looks like the calibration is pretty good. Um, you see how the diamond is centered on there. Um, it looks like there's a little bit on the edge where it might be slightly off, but this is what we consider good calibration. Um, if you see it shifted down to where there's a lot of white showing or the left or right when there's a lot of white on the edges, that would be an issue because what you're either going to have happen is it's going to laser the frame um, which that's paint that's on there. It doesn't look the best after you do a back glass if the, the paint's missing on some of the frame or it's going to be too far inwards and it's going to hit, like I mentioned earlier, a component. But this right here is what we consider a good calibration. As I mentioned earlier, if I did need to adjust these values, all I would do is go into the settings area, um, hit center, again 101.515. Hit the check mark, and then these are the values I'm going to adjust. So say I wanted to go up a little because I can see a little bit of white space on my edge. 47.9 again becomes 48, and that's kind of how I would play with the uh, where the laser is going to burn. Um, and when you get something that looks like this, you're good to go. You should be able to put a phone in there. Um, it's always good to if you have any uh, sort of demo phones at the store or. Um, like phones that have been abandoned that you can practice with, run one through there, it never hurts just to run an actual phone through. Um, I don't have the fume extractor set up right now, as you can see, you can see the opening back there. So for calibration purposes, you don't really need the extractor, it doesn't burn any glue like it would with a phone, so you're good. But for when you are doing a phone, make sure you have that fume extractor connected because that burnt glue is a pretty strong smell, and if you don't have the extractor, it's, it's definitely uh, not a good thing to have. So. Uh, that's everything I can think of for the calibration process. We might come out with a couple other videos answering common questions we've had with the blue laser, but this covers the most common one by far, which is how do I calibrate my blue laser? Um, reach out to support at etechparts.com or our sales team, sales at etechparts.com if you have any questions or if you're interested in purchasing, purchasing one of these for us, or sorry, purchasing one of these from us um, or anything else we can do to help.